Well, hello again, YouTube. It's, um, it's Wednesday night, technically Thursday morning, August 17th, 2023, 3 a.m. Yeah, I've just spent the last, I don't know, roughly hour and 10 minutes in Priscilla's bed alone. I don't, I don't know what she's doing and at this point I don't even, it'd be a lie to say I don't care, but I'm not sticking around to figure it out or find out. She, um, uh, I don't know. Do I need to go into details? Probably not. I'm just leaving disappointed. Um, she made the burger thing and the mushroom, it was, it was okay. I uh, wasn't as hungry as I, uh, I wasn't as hungry as I usually am at work, so I didn't manage to finish the whole thing. I made mean, ate maybe half of it. Um, I, when I got there, I had the whole box of stuff from, from the rental cars, which I would love to explain what that's about. Um, but I don't have that long of a drive home, and I don't feel like sitting in my car explaining it, so. Maybe on a later video, because it is a box with a lot of junk in it, and, and the story behind it is pretty interesting, at least I thought it was pretty interesting, but when I tried to explain it to Priscilla, she just pretty much cut me off and then she disappeared into the kitchen, so. I gave her one of the sunshades, so hopefully she likes it. Well, she, you know, I'm just like, well, do you want it? And she's like, okay. you know, she couldn't even give me a definite yes or a no. That's something that I really don't like. When, when I give somebody a yes, and, and maybe that's just me being autistic, but, like, I, I make decisions like a flow chart. Uh, my whole brain is just wired with if-then-or statements. If-then-or-else um, logic statements. Flow charts. I used to code when I was a kid. And, and in order for me to properly process other people when I ask them a yes or a no question I need a yes or a no like a really clear definite yes or a no and if not a definite yes or a no a, a, a something else that is a definite answer which I was just absolutely not getting at any rate at one point she's like well put it over there so I put it you know just kind of basically threw it on her floor with the rest of the crap that's like all over her floor my god her place is such a mess and I guess that's one of the things I don't like about going there because if I wanted to be in a messy apartment I'd just go home right um but yeah anyway she uh she had um I had Black Mirror on again, which is an interesting show. I, I don't find myself interested in any TV shows enough to watch them anymore, which is kind of screwed up when you consider what a massively huge collection of movies and TV shows that I own on physical media, which I'm not getting rid of. Like, I figure at some point I'll be interested in it again, and I've spent so much time collecting it, and I'm still kind of passionate about the collection itself. I just don't really enjoy watching it anymore much more interested in watching either YouTube or porn. Um, speaking of YouTube and porn, um, my God, the, the Lewis Rossman live stream that I caught maybe five hours after it was a live stream where he attempted to repair a cock ring. I, I would say he did actually repair the cock ring. He just didn't really finish the job because the, uh, well, I don't, I don't want to spoil it. There's a link in the description. Of course, by the time I get this posted, it'll be an old Lewis Rossman video. But uh, um, yeah, I think Lewis Rossman finally trolled everybody who's been giving him shit for only doing MacBook repair videos. Which I know he's done some like smartphone repair videos as well, because I'm pretty sure that's the first thing that brought me to his channel was looking for smartphone repair, and then I stuck around for the cats and the snark and the right to repair his battle for right to repair has just been epic and then his whole battle against you know 
New York City that eventually drove him to Texas is pretty interesting too. Kind of shocked he didn't stay in Florida. That looked like that was a thing for a while. Anyway, yeah, I love Lewis Rossman's channel. If you're not familiar with it, check it out. Link in the description, maybe. Or you can just search it. Um, but yeah, I ate, ate my burger and, and Priscilla's, you know, and, and her place is just so messy. There's really nowhere to sit down. Like there is one chair, like kitchen type chair, but it's in the living room by her desk. So I sat there and set the box in front of myself. And then when I was trying to explain to her, like how all the stuff came to be in the box, which I'll explain in a later video of mine, it has to do with rental cars. It's a, it's a rental car phenomenon that I would have never really understood had I not started working for a rental car company. Uh, and, and it's, and it's an interesting story. So hopefully I get to it. Um, I have no shortage of uh, USB-C or micro USB cables now, and I don't think I ever will. Um, like I just have a ridiculous amount of them now. And some other random shit. And a new uh, sunshade for my car, which I may as well leave in my car. Although I expect I'll probably keep using the shitty one I've been using for the last couple of years. I mean, hey, I bought it during one of these videos. When I was, I don't even remember what the deal was. I just remember I was in Mesa and went into a 99 cent only store and came out with a sunshade and then managed to lose one of the suction cups that hold it in place while I was taking it out of the packaging. No, I still haven't found that. Um, at this point, it's kind of falling apart from age, but it still serves its purpose. On that note, I think I should put it in because I don't think I will be up and about. Considering that it's like after three in the morning now, I don't think I will be up and about until after the sun is up and about. So I'd rather my car not feel like an oven when I get in it. Because the daytime heat here in Phoenix is still very much a thing. It got up to 112 today, which is not as brutal as most of July was, but I will tell you that shit was draining me walking on the lot. Oh, and I had quite the moment with Esther today on the lot. Where basically she asked me to do something that as night lead, I just discussed the night before with Rob. And she was telling me to do something completely different. And I moved one of the vehicles, mostly because I just wanted a ride away from her and and um, and out of the hot, hot lot. And um, But I just probably went in and was like, hey, Rob, this is, can I get some clarification on this? Because this is what you very clearly said. This is what I did two days ago, and this is what you said yesterday. And this is what Esther's telling me to do now. And, um, yeah, we need to get some clarification on that. And at the risk of totally giving out inside information about what's going on at work, um, yeah, I got the feeling that Esther's not going to remain a lead for much longer. I would be feel bad if she completely lost her job. I mean, I, I feel like she doesn't really have anything going on in her life. And I don't want to see her lose her job, but just the way she kind of barks orders at people as if they all are just clueless is not a respectful way to treat people. I mean, even, even like, say... Um, Honestly, of all the people I work with now, the one that I most worry about, like, not worry about just not doing shit right is um, the French guy, Emmanuel. And I don't think he means, means, like, I don't think he's deliberately kind of messing stuff up. I think there's a lot of language barrier with him. But, um, like, there was one vehicle that was marked in a way that it should have gone in the shop line. And when I looked at it, that was what I was thinking. But then, as I was running the shag, and this is after Keontae's gone for the day, we go around the corner, and I noticed he put a put a put an orange hat on it, in, which indicates uh, PMs, which generally speaking is washer fluid. Most of the time, it's oil change. Um, now we're regularly doing PMs for Teslas, and I'm I. I don't know what constitutes PM for Teslas, other than maybe check the wiper fluid. What does one check on an electric car? Obviously, there's no changing of the oil. Oh my God, it is actually starting to rain outside. Wow. Um, I don't know. I don't know. 
but I know that I've been moving several Tesla Model 3s and, and giving them orange hat for PMs because I got the code for PM on it. One of these days, I'm going to find a mechanic that isn't going to just give me a blank look and actually ask him, hey, what the fuck is P... Obviously, it's not an oil change. What the fuck is PMs on a Tesla Model 3? Anyway, uh, it was marked with an S and a circle, which generally is one of the codes for, for the shop line, um, which is all kinds of, pretty much all kinds of basic repairs, minor repairs, from broken trim to the wipers have fallen off. I had one I got in today where it didn't, it wasn't marked on the window at all, and I'm like, I wonder what the fucking deal is with this one. And I, I, first thing I do is turn on the key, and everything's computerized, all cars are computerized at this point, so I'm just looking at the screen to see if it pops up something telling me something which most of the time, like, that's how I can identify stuff. If there's an issue with the tire pressure, it tells me. If there's an issue with it needing an oil change, it tells me. If it needs wiper fluid, it tells me. If it, uh, if it needs the brakes checked, it tells me. It's all right there on the screen. This one, there's nothing on the screen. And, I, and then I put my left arm on the inside of the door just to kind of use the, the window ledge as sort of an armrest. And it's a, one of those giant killing machine type trucks. And in, in the window, the driver's side window, just in front of, um, or towards the front in the door, are, are a vent, which is obviously the defrost. To try to defrost it where you look through to see the mirror. There's a defrost vent there. Uh, my car has a similar defrost vent, but it's it's in the dashboard kind of behind the corner of the door. But this particular truck had it. And as I kind of put my arm there, my hand hit something, and I looked over, and it was a little wiper blade. And I'm like, well, that's interesting. And I walked around the car just to check, well, the ginormous SUV, just to check. And sure as shit, that was the rear, rear wiper. Like, the whole assembly had just completely fallen off. And it was, and that's where... Whoever had noticed it was like that decided to put it, and apparently whoever it was doesn't have a pen to write down or doesn't, isn't somebody, I don't have a pen to do that either, so at some point I should probably have one, but um, to mark down what's wrong with it on the window, so I just left that there, and I think I moved it to put it on top of the little knob, shifter knob, to make it a little more obvious, because that's not a spot I would have normally looked for missing vehicle parts, but... Anyway, so that's, that's so anyway, um, yeah, um, French guy Emmanuel puts it in that. And at first, I'm thinking that's okay. That's the wrong line because it said on it something about maintenance, which generally speaking goes in the shop line. And it had an S with a circle on it, whereas when it's uh, when it's PMs, it's you know, which is most of the time an oil change. It's um, there's an F with a circle on it. And I'm not sure what the F stands for. It just has something with a code that goes in the computer that um, Hertz uses to track, which, you know, the, some of the guys that do this, they have tablets and stuff where they put in the code of what needs to be repaired. And um, so, yeah, the window would indicate it would get a pink hat and go in, in that line and put the orange one on it. And so I asked, I, I did ask him, I said, uh, I said, I forget exactly what I said, but I wasn't condescending about it the way Esther would have been, and I wasn't commanding him what to do. I just, I just asked him, like, I said, well, I said it's got a, it's got an S on the window. Wouldn't that be a? It's got an S on the window. Wouldn't that be? Wouldn't that be um, shop line? Wouldn't that be a pink hat? And he goes, he goes, oh no, it's, uh, he goes, it's. He goes, you know, I was thinking that. He goes, but on the screen it just says oil change maintenance required. And I'm like, yeah, yeah, that would definitely be, be an orange hat. So maybe the person writing it down just didn't really understand. So it's possibly put in the system wrong, but we put it in the right spot. Now how that gets handled by the shop, uh, I don't know. It was still sitting there at the end of the night. And I was not going to talk about that stuff. Like that stuff's so much more boring. It won't happen with Priscilla. But to be honest, what happened with Priscilla was bored enough that I am, am home. And it's, you know, 3.19 in the morning. Bottom line is, if I'm going to if I'm gonna be alone in bed, I'd just as soon be alone in my own bed. Um, so we watched the first episode of Black Mirror. It was pretty interesting. Now, for the most part, I was alone 
in the living room going through all the stuff that I collected out of the rental cars today, which I'll explain later. And, and, and she was, uh, in the kitchen doing kitchen stuff, which is cool. I'm, I'm cool with that. I mean, she came back out with this like mushroom burger thing and, and some cold fries of some court kind, which were not awful. They weren't good, but they weren't awful. And, 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 and as far as like why I didn't eat it, like I, I had like four Taco Bell burritos today and and then like two slices of pizza that Rob gave me from Barrows. So I, I'm just full, you know. I mean, I wanted to eat it. It wasn't that I wasn't interested or wasn't grateful. I just not particularly hungry. Um, but yeah, she, uh, so I watched the first episode and, uh, and she plops down on the, on the couch where she spends most of her time, she's not working, apparently, and doesn't clear any space. Like, there's a bunch of junk on her couch. She doesn't clear any space on the couch for me to sit down. Yeah, well, at one point, just to get a little more comfortable, I get undressed, which, mind you, she hasn't done yet. But I, I'm thinking, well, maybe if I get undressed, you know, she'll get the hint that, you know, it's, 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 uh, you know, I like, you've got a you've got a man here like that would like do some some bedroom fun type stuff or at least you know like to see you naked too and 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 so I'm anyway at that point I kind of get up and I I go up to the couch and I'm like I'm like any any chance you like clear enough and I'll clearing up enough room there for me too so she does she like picks up a bunch of the crap that's on the couch and makes enough space for me to kind of get on there but she doesn't cuddle with me whatsoever. Like, she just kind of sits at the other end of the couch, completely and fully dressed. Ends up putting another episode of uh, Black Mirror on after the first one ended. In fact, I think that's around the time I actually got on the couch. But anyway, the, the second episode was really good. Don't get me wrong. I enjoy watching Black Mirror. I just not so much into TV these days. Uh, I did make it to the end of that episode of Black Mirror, and I figured maybe after that she'd be down for a little bit of bedroom fun or whatever. Uh, but no, she puts on this documentary. At this point, like, she's not really doing anything with me. She puts on a... And mind you, it's getting late. Like, at this point, it's already... You know, well after 1... You know, well after 1 a.m. I mean, she's the one that tells me sometimes, well, I got to be up for work in the morning. And granted, now I don't have to be up at work in the morning. I don't have to be at work till 2, which generally speaking means I got to be up around, you know, 12.30 or 1, getting ready. Um, so I, I, I once again have the luxury of sleeping in, which is a nice thing. And I'm only working an eight-hour shift in the, in the evening, and that's a nice thing. I do have some more time on my hands. I should probably start handling more things I need to get done. But right now, I've just kind of been enjoying that I've been able to relax a little bit more after just, you know a month and a half just running myself ragged, trying to catch up on my money situation, which still isn't fully caught up, but that's a separate tragedy. So I get up there and just like, and I, I, I try to touch on her a little bit and she just gives me dirty looks for it. She's not touching me at all. And I'm like buck ass naked on her couch. And, and she puts on this documentary about women in hip hop which, of course, is showing a lot of scantily clad, very curvy, sexy black women. Yes, I want some of that in my face. And uh, so, I mean, I'm looking at that and I'm getting kind of aroused by that. But Brazil's not doing anything remotely arousing. And, and in fact, I'm getting really bored with her company at this point. And I'm thinking, you know... Yesterday, I left there with all my phones nearly dead because I didn't plug in, but at least now I've got all this shit I recovered out of a rental car. So I got plenty of chargers and plenty of cords. And now the guy, there's only two outlets in her bedroom. And normally I need three, but whatever, I can I can charge. You know, two out of three phones ain't, ain't bad. And, and actually, one of them was sitting at a pretty high charge level. Uh, Obama phone three had a pretty high char level, charge level, so nothing to stress on there. And, and, and uh, so I move into the into the bedroom, plug in my phones in, so that, well, plug in Obama phone five and my iPhone in so they're getting charged. And I'm laying in the bed, Buckass Nation, and I'm thinking, well, maybe she'll follow me in here. 
Like maybe that'll that's maybe that's the hint that she needs. That like, come on, it's two in the morning, it's two a.m. It's 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 come have some adult fun time, cause I'm I'm here. Like you you invited me here and I'm here, and and. and didn't really come here to be ignored while you watch a documentary that you could have watched without me here. Um, and, um, I did enjoy the footage of Roxanne Shante, but that's a, that's a whole other thing. Um, anyway, um, so I'm laying in the bedroom and I start kind of going through my YouTube stuff. And that's when I hit the Lewis Rossman video and I'm like, Oh, my God, he did a live stream repairing a cock ring because it was only designed for one use only. And, and then they offer a subscription and, and, and that's just everything that his right to repair angle is against. And, oh my God, he's really going to try to extend the life of a cock ring and rebuild a cock ring. This is hysterical. So I go to tell her, well, at this point, she's in the bathroom. And so I just kind of knock on the door. She's like, what? I just got in here. And I'm like, are you all right in there? Mind you, at this point, it's about 2.20 a.m. So I've been in the bedroom for like 20 plus minutes waiting for her to join me, and she hasn't. Not happy about that. Feeling kind of ignored about that. But, hey. At least I'm able to use the Wi-Fi and my phones are getting some juice. So it's not a complete loss. And maybe she'll come join me. But no, she's gone in the bathroom. I don't know what she's doing in the bathroom. I knock on the door and kind of tap. It's like, hey. And she's kind of, kind of, a, you know, angrily. It's like, well, I just got in here. And I'm like, well, you okay in there? Yeah, I'm fine. So I go to open the door because I just want to peek my head in and just say, oh my God, Louis Rossman's repairing your cock ring. This is hysterical. But she's locked the door. Like she's locked me out of the room. So she's invited me to my home and then into her home with the pretense of being intimate. And, and now she's in another room and she's locked me out. I mean, am I wrong for being bothered by this? Because I'm pretty bothered by this. And, and and so I I I go back and I figure well you know maybe she's maybe she's taking a dump. I don't need to I don't need to watch that. That's fine. I'll uh, you know go into the go into the uh, let's go watch the Lewis Rossman video. Well, the Lewis Rossman video is well over thirty minutes, and I watched the entire thing, and she never came out of the bathroom. And I went in the living room and I had enough time to get completely dressed and gather up my stuff and she still never came out of the bathroom. So I went in the bedroom and unplugged my phone chargers, came back out and she's still locked in the bathroom away from me. And and and, and then I, now we're here. So, yeah, if I'm going to be alone and ignored, I'd just assume that, do, do that in the comfort of my own bed. 